Hi, my dear students, myself, Anu Shishtharan, Academic Director and uh, Biology Faculty of Rankings Entrance Training Academy. I welcome all of you in my new video lesson. Today, I am going to talk about Cell, the Unit of Life, Part 3. Do you remember in Part 2, we have discussed so many endomembrane systems in a eukaryotic cell. Do you remember? The most important cell organelles come under the category of endomembrane system. Yes. Which are the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, lysosome and vacuoles. Today I am going to talk about few more cell organelles. First of all, mitochondria. Okay. As you know, mitochondria is one of the most important cell organelle, first of all observed by a famous scientist named Kolika. Is it clear? First of all, the mitochondria observed by a famous scientist named Kolika. Okay. The number of mitochondria in a cell is actually variable depending on the physiological activity of the cell. For example, in case of a single celled structure, I mean a single celled algae, it is called chlorella. Chlorella having only one mitochondria. Is it clear? It's actually having only one mitochondria. When you consider a mitochondria, it's ha it has a diameter of 0.221 micrometer and a length of 1 to 4.1 micrometer. Let me discuss the detailed structure of mitochondria. The mitochondria is surrounded by means of a two layered membrane. Okay. The first one is the outer membrane and second one is the inner membrane. This is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane. You can see that the outer membrane is smooth, but the inner membrane is actually having so many infoldings are there. Okay, the infoldings of inner membrane we can collectively call the cristae. See, it is called the cristae. Okay, and the inner portion of the inner membrane is actually a fluid filled area. This particular area we can collectively call the matrix. Is it clear? This is called a matrix. As you know, the mitochondria commonly considered as a powerhouse of the cell. Why? Because this is actually the site of aerobic respiration and uh, ATP production. Is it clear? That means the process of cellular respiration you have learned in lower classes that's actually occur in the mitochondria and they can release the energy in the form of ATP. That is why the mitochondria we can collectively call the powerhouse of the cell. Is it clear? And uh, the mitochondria again considered as a semi-autonomous unit or semi-autonomous cell organelle. Why? Because this matrix actually having the DNA, you know, extra chromosomal circular DNA, few RNA molecule and uh, ribosomes. Is it clear? So this is actually a cell organelle, but it has its own DNA and uh, ribosomes. Is it clear? That is why the mitochondria commonly called a semi-autonomous cell organelle. Okay. And uh, the mitochondria divided by means of fission process. This is something about the structure and function of mitochondria. Is it clear? Second one, now we are going to discuss that is plastids. As you know, the plastids are actually found in all plant cells and uh, euglenoids. You remember the 
concepts euglenoids yes it's a group of organisms come under the category of kingdom protista yes they bear some specific pigments thus imparting specific colors to the plant parts okay first of all we have to discuss the types of plastics dear students based on the type of pigments in it plastics can be classified into three categories is it clear the plastics can be classified into three categories first one is the chloroplast second one chromoplast and third one leucoplast okay what is the meaning of chloroplast you know chloroplast is a type of plastics it contains chlorophyll and uh, carotenoid pigments which are responsible for trapping light energy essential for photosynthesis you are very familiar during photosynthesis the light energy should be trapped by the plants especially with the help of chloroplasts is it clear so the chloroplast it actually contains chlorophyll and uh, carotenoid pigments which are responsible for trapping the light energy essential for photosynthesis is it clear second type of plastids we can collectively called the chromoplasts what is the meaning of chromoplast it contains fat soluble carotenoid pigments like carotene xanthophyll and others this is actually giving yellow orange or red color to the plant parts okay such type of plastids are collectively called a chromoplast then third type of plastids we are going to discuss it is called a leucoplast dear students the colorless plastids of varied shapes and size we can collectively called a leucoplast leucoplast means colorless plastids but they are having some specific function okay so based on the substances stored in the leucoplast we can broadly classified into three categories amyloplast elaioplast and uh, alluroplast what is the meaning of amyloplast amyloplast actually store the carbohydrates elaioplast stores oils and fats alluroplast it can be able to store the proteins okay these three are different types of leucoplast they are colorless plastids they are having storage in function is it clear this is something about the different types of plastids in this concept in this chapter we have to learn the detailed structure of chloroplast so now we are going to discuss the structure of chloroplast in detail for learning the structure of chloroplast we can see that this is the diagrammatic representation of a chloroplast it's a green colored plastids because of the presence of chlorophyll pigments dear students majority of the chloroplasts are actually found in the mesophyll cells of leaves do you remember the mesophyll cells yes when you learn the anatomy of a leaf it's actually having so many parenchymate tissues seen between the upper epidermis and the lower epidermis we can collectively called the mesophyll cells so what i said majority of the chloroplasts of the green plants are found in the mesophyll cells of the leaves is it clear the chloroplast may be lens shaped oval shape spherical shape or even ribbon shaped in different types of organisms okay when you consider the size of the chloroplast it's actually having 5 to 10 micrometer in length and 2 to 4 micrometer in width the number of chloroplasts also showing great variation in different plants when you consider the unicellular algae called chlamydomonas it's actually having 
only one chloroplast is it clear when you consider the mesophyll cell of a leaf it may have 20 to 40 chloroplasts per cell dear students structurally they are having similarity with the mitochondria we have already been learned just like that of mitochondria chloroplast also having two membranes this is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane is it clear like that of mitochondria chloroplast also considered as a semi autonomous organelle why because you are very familiar it's actually having its own dna and ribosomes the ribosomes commonly seen over here it is called a 70 s type of ribosomes is it clear when you consider the detailed structure you can see that the the inner space i mean the uh, fluid filled space inside the inner membrane we can collectively called a stroma is it clear inside the stroma you can see that numerous sac like structures are there okay what is the name of the sac like structures dear students each and every sac like structures are collectively called a thylakoids can you see the arrangements of thylakoids yes the thylakoids are actually sac like structures arranged one above the other just like that of stack of coins okay this group of thylakoids we can collectively called a granum okay and each and every thylakoid it's actually having an inner portion we can collectively called a lumen of thylakoids okay and you can see this is actually the granum this is also the granum these two granum are connected by means of another tubular structure it is called a stroma lamellae what we can say stroma lamellae this is called a stroma lamellae okay this is actually the fluid filled area i mean the inner space especially inside the inner membrane we can collectively called the stroma do you know the stroma contains enzymes for carbohydrates and uh, protein synthesis is it clear like that of mitochondria it's actually having its own dna and uh, ribosomes hence it is called a semi autonomous unit as you know did you hear about the chlorophyll pigments yes dear children the chlorophyll pigments are actually present in these thylakoids okay this is something about the structure of chloroplast third one we are going to discuss the structure of another important cell organelle called the ribosomes you can see that the ribosomes are granular structures first observed under the electron microscope by a famous scientist named george pellet in 1953 dear students this is the structure of a ribosome okay this ribosome is actually composed of rna and proteins okay one of the most important characteristic feature of ribosome it is not at all surrounded by a membrane is it clear all type of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells they are having ribosomes except mammalian rbc okay when you consider the detailed structure of ribosome you can see that it has two subunits one small subunit and one large subunit is it clear there are two different types of ribosomes we can collectively consider as 80s type of ribosomes and 70s type of ribosomes is it clear dear student if it is an 80s type of ribosome it has a large subunit that is 60s and a small subunit that is 40s yes. okay this type of ribosomes commonly seen in eukaryotic cell is it clear 
when you consider the 70s type of ribosome it also having two important subunits which are the subunits 50s as the large subunits and 30s as the small subunits dear students this type of ribosomes commonly seen in prokaryotic cells and we have seen inside the eukaryotic cell also 70s ribosomes are present but in the cell organelles we have seen the cell organelles like mitochondria and chloroplast they are having their own ribosome such type of ribosomes are always 70s type of ribosomes is it clear dear students norm normally 70s type of ribosomes are seen in prokaryotic cells and uh, the cell organelles like mitochondria and uh, chloroplasts is it clear when you consider the process of protein synthesis so many ribosomes are attached on a single mrna this condition is called uh, polyribosomes is it clear what is the meaning of polyribosomes at the time of protein synthesis several ribosomes which type of ribosome 70s type of ribosomes becomes attached to the mrna okay this is actually the structure over here so many ribosomes are attached on a single mrna this is called a polyribosomes or polysomes is it clear this is something about the structure of ribosomes is it clear now we have to discuss in detail the structure of cilia and uh, flagella okay dear students cilia and flagella are hair like outgrowth of the cell membrane the cilia are very small structures okay the cilia are very small structures and the flagella are comparatively longer than cilia okay flagella always responsible for cell movement isn't it cell movement when you consider the structure of cilia or flagella the electron microscopic study of cilia or flagellum it's actually showing it's surrounded by means of a plasma membrane dear student this is actually the diagrammatic representation of the electron micrograph of cilia or flagella is it clear and the electron microscopic study of cilia or flagellum it's actually showing that it's covered with a plasma membrane can you see the plasma membrane over here yes the core is called axoneme that means the entire portions inside the plasma membrane we can collectively called axoneme okay this axoneme it's actually having a number of peripheral microtubules can you see the peripheral microtubules here you can see nine pairs of peripheral microtubules are there is it clear the axoneme usually has nine pairs of peripheral microtubules or peripheral doublets is it clear and uh, a pair of centrally located microtubules is it clear this type of arrangements we can collectively considered as 9 plus 2 array okay that means 9 microtubules or doublets at the periphery and two microtubules at the center this arrangement is called 9 plus 2 array okay now you can see that the central tubules are connected by a bridge can you see the bridge and uh, each peripheral doublets it's actually having a radial spoke what is the radial spoke over here 
for learning the radial spore first of all we have to see there is a sheet around the central microtubule can you see okay the central microtubules are actually enclosed in a sheet this is called a central sheet what you can say central sheet is it clear each and every peripheral microtubules are actually connected to the central sheet through a structure called a radial spoke that means there are nine radial spokes are present is it clear dear students the peripheral doublets are also interconnected can you see the peripheral microtubules are also interconnected by linkers this is called a linkers okay dear students both the cilium and flagellum emerge from a centriole like structure called basal bodies okay the detailed aspects of centriole we will discuss in the next session okay so what i said both cilium and flagellum emerge from a centriole like structure called basal body dear students this is the detailed structure of cilia and flagella okay next one we are going to discuss about centrosome okay dear student centrosome it's an organelle usually containing two cylindrical structures called centrioles these are two centrioles can you see two cylindrical structures called centrioles lie at the right angles to each other okay this is actually the structure of centrosome dear students here we have to discuss in detail the structure of a centriole okay now we are going to discuss the structure of a centriole is it clear when you consider the structure of a centriole it's actually having an organization like a cartwheel okay it's actually having an organization like a cartwheel is it clear they are actually made up of nine evenly spaced peripheral fibrils can you see how many peripheral fibrils are there nine one two three four five six seven eight nine can you see nine evenly spaced peripheral fibrils it's actually composed of a protein called a tubulin protein which protein tubulin protein dear students each and every peripheral fibril is a triplet can you see but in case of cilia and flagella we have seen it's a doublet but here it's a triplet the adjacent triplets are also linked can you see the adjacent triplets are also linked can you see yes the central part of the proximal region of the centriole is actually a proteinaceous region can you see that means the central portion is a proteinaceous region it is called a hub what we can say hub which is connected with the tubules of the peripheral triplets by radial spoke dear student all these are radial spoke the centrally placed proteinaceous region what we can say it is called a hub okay the hub actually connected to the peripheral tubules through radial spoke okay the radial spoke also made of proteins is it clear do you know what is the function of centriole dear students the centriole forms the basal body of cilia or flagella and the spindle fibers that give rise to the spindle apparatus during the cell division in animal cells why because centriole is commonly seen in animal cells so it plays an important role in the formation of spindle apparatus during the time of cell division is it clear this is something about the structure of a centriole dear students now we have to discuss in detail the structure of nucleus 
you are very familiar nucleus it is considered as the cell brain you know it's a controlling center of the cell okay dense protoplasmic body that contains hereditary information okay do you know the molecule which having the hereditary information yes you have learned in lower classes that is the dna okay okay that means inside the nucleus the dna will be there it actually lies in the median or central position of a cell but in case of a plant cell you know it actually lies towards the periphery isn't it in case of prokaryotes you are very familiar they are not having nuclear membrane such type of poorly defined nucleus we have discussed in the first video lesson that is called a nucleoid am i clear do you know cells like rbc and the cv2 elements in uh, complex permanent tissues in plants they lack nucleus is it clear did you hear about cv2 elements yes the cv2 elements is an important cell present in the phloem tissues that you have learned in lower classes these two type of cells they are not having nucleus dear students the cell without nucleus it cannot survive for long time okay some type of cells they are having only one nucleus we can consider it as uninucleate okay sometimes it may have more than one nuclei it is called multi nucleate okay the nucleus first of all discovered by a famous scientist named robert brown in 1831 this is actually the diagrammatic representation showing the structure of a nucleus you can see that it's actually surrounded by means of a double layered membrane that is the outer membrane and the inner membrane dear students there is a space in between the outer membrane and inner membrane this is called a perinuclear space what we can say perinuclear space is it clear the outer membrane and inner membrane these two membranes are not at all continuous it's actually having so many pores in between such a pores are collectively called a nuclear pore what we can say nuclear pore is it clear do you know what is the function of this nuclear pores yes this nuclear pores are the passage through which the movement of rna and the protein molecules takes place in both direction which what is the meaning of both direction that means from nucleus to cytoplasm and again from cytoplasm to the nucleus is it clear and you can see that the inner portion of the nucleus it's actually having a fluid filled area or the matrix of the nucleus it is called a nucleoplasm is it clear this nucleoplasm contains nucleolus and uh, this is the nucleolus okay nucleolus and uh, chromatin reticulum is it clear do you know what is the function of nucleolus yes the nucleoli are actually the spherical structures present in the nucleoplasm the content of nucleolus is continuous with the rest of the nucleoplasm as it is not a membrane bound structure you know the main function it is the site for active ribosomal rna synthesis means r rna synthesis okay and uh, you can see that along with the nucleolus the chromatin reticulum will be there dear students you are very familiar during the time of cell division all this chromatin reticulum becomes highly condensed to form the chromosomes okay actually this chromatin reticulum is composed of dna and uh, some basic proteins called uh, histones okay okay along with the histones some other non histone proteins and rna also present as you are very familiar during the time of cell division what happen during the time of cell division all these chromatin reticulum becomes highly condensed 
to form a structure called a chromosomes dear student this is actually the structure of chromosome it's actually having a centrally placed region it is called a centromere and uh, this arms are collectively called a chromatids this is the centromere and this is the chromatids okay the centromere it's actually having a disc like structure it is called a kinetochore is it clear dear students based on the position of centromere chromosomes can be broadly classified into four different categories is it clear the chromosomes can be broadly classified into four different categories that is metacentric sub metacentric uh, acrocentric and uh, telocentric so clear four different types of chromosomes this classification actually based on the position of centromere which are they metacentric sub metacentric acrocentric and uh, telocentric what is the meaning of metacentric you can see that the centromere seen exactly at the center that means both the arms have equal lengths so clear such type of chromosomes we can collectively call the metacentric chromosomes but in second case you can see that the sub metacentric chromosome the centromere seen slight away from the center that means one arm is long and other is short this is a short arm okay this type of chromosomes we can collectively call the sub metacentric okay and third one is called acrocentric here you can see that the centromere seen at the end of the chromosome that means it's actually having a long arm and a very short arm this is called uh, acrocentric and the last one is called uh, telocentric you can see that the centromere seen at the terminal portion that means they are having i mean the centromere seen exactly at the tip of the chromosome okay so this is actually the classification of chromosomes based on the position of centromere is it clear dear students this is something about the detailed aspects of mitochondria chloroplast then centrioles cilia and flagella and again the nucleus this chapter is over i hope you have understood all the concepts for better understanding you have to go through this video lesson again and again okay thank you have a nice day